Welcome back, guys. Today, we're playing something a little different. I'm actually playing carriers. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! I know, I know. I've been pretty against carriers for a very, very long time. But there's a good reason that I'm playing carriers today, and that you're probably going to see a bit more carriers on the channel. More than zero that it has been in the past few years, let's just say. And this good reason for it is a holistic look at the game. I don't think I can provide as good content for you guys on surface ships without looking at some of the things that they deal with. They have to deal with carriers. They have to deal with submarines. So by me just constantly ignoring carriers, ignoring submarines, saying they're OP and just never playing them, I don't think that's a great way for me to actually provide value for you guys in a lot of these videos. And if I want to provide more value to you as a surface ship player on how to deal with these carriers, deal with these subs, I need to play them. That's what it comes down to. The best way to learn how to deal with something is to play that class that you want to deal with. So I'll give you an example. When I started playing this game, I was a battleship main. I'm sure that doesn't surprise very many of you. But I was a battleship main. I only played the Japanese battleship line. At the time, there was only the Japanese battleships and the American battleships, and that was it for battleships in the whole game. So that's all I did. I just played Japanese battleships, and I found myself dying a lot to torpedoes, dying a lot to HE spam, stealth firing Zows at the time. Yeah, it was a very different experience, and what helped me get better at the game wasn't just playing it a lot. It was branching out, trying to play destroyers, learning how to play them well, trying to play cruisers, and learning how to play those well. I understood then what made a cruiser good, what made a cruiser weak. The same thing for destroyers, and how I could play best against them as a battleship player. And by playing all three classes, I think I learned how to play all three much better. And I understood the strengths and weaknesses and positions that I could play against certain other classes and ships, depending on what I was interested in playing that day. And I think this is a really important point. I haven't invested any time in carriers. I haven't invested hardly any time in submarines either. I've just been on this channel saying, they're OP, there's nothing I can do, this sucks, complaining, 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 without really doing much about it. And here we are. I'm doing something about it by, I know, playing the thing that I swore to destroy or whatever, right? It's pretty easy to play this class, I would say. Um, the difficulty really lies in optimizing farming, let's just say. I think that that's really the skill point here. Old carriers were a lot higher on the skill ceiling. And obviously that was an objective of wargaming in the past. And you're gonna see me miss and play pretty poorly as a carrier player, even though I'm saying it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I certainly have a lot of room for improvement in my current carrier play. And I hope to get better, and hopefully as I get better, I understand more of the weaknesses that come with playing a carrier, and I can understand a little bit more of the nuances where a enemy carrier, at least a good one, won't be interested in striking a certain destroyer or a cruiser, or what positions tend to lead you to get focused more as a battleship, as a cruiser, as a DD. For example, this Pomerd. I think this is a pretty standard uh, play that is just not gonna work in a carrier game. Pretty obvious, but it's good to know these things and understand how you can play your battleship, how you can play your cruiser, your destroyer, in carrier games versus without. And I hope to learn that and then provide that for you guys. So there you go, that's my kinda idea behind it. And I won't lie, there is a certain satisfaction that I can get from just clicking on people and doing a ton of damage to them. <laughs> it's pretty relaxing, I'm not gonna lie. After playing surface ships, getting frustrated, it's a pretty relaxing experience. I don't think it's the most enjoyable thing for me personally. As a lot of you know, I got into World of Warships primarily on brawling battleships. I really enjoy the close range action stuff, so flying up above everyone and then clicking on everyone, it's not as engaging for me, but I do see the value in learning how to play this class. Submarines too, that one I do have a lot more work to do because I feel quite useless when I'm playing a submarine, 
And I also feel quite helpless when I'm playing against a submarine. So I really need to understand that dynamic a little bit better. As for carriers, even as a total noob, I'm starting to understand some of the limitations. For example, some of the traditional advice has been just clump up in a death ball of AA. And yeah, that works very well at deterring a carrier. Obviously they can go in and get a strike, but they do have a limit to the amount of times they can strike into a death ball of AA before they actually do run out of planes, especially towards the late game. So playing as a clumped up group isn't going to deny every strike, but it will mean you have a massive advantage going into the late game. Other things, obviously, if you're playing a destroyer or any ship and going off on your own isn't going to be a good idea. This Otlin, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to actually even do any damage to this guy because I suck with <laughs> actually trying to deal damage to these DDs. Uh, we'll hopefully get a little bit better as I play this a little bit more, but the actual act of spotting this guy is what's actually going to get him killed here. And this is something you just can't do in carrier games. I understood this as a surface ship player. It's like, I shouldn't do this. But no, actually, you cannot play like this. And as we play this class a little bit more, I think there's going to be a few more less obvious circumstances that don't pop out as easily as a surface ship player where we can't just play in these really good positions otherwise. Without me in the game playing a carrier here, mind you, very poorly against this guy. <laughs> So we just fly over him, completely whiffing on our strike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of improvement that I could be doing. But back to what I was talking about when it comes to positioning your surface ship to make it difficult for the carrier to strike you. Well, I think the most interesting thing I've discovered so far is that I can actually push in as a surface ship even without team support and the carrier won't always want to go after me. And what do I mean by this? I need to make sure whatever strike the carrier is lining up on me results in them, when they drop their strike and over fly over with the rest of their squad, they're flying into my teammates. That's something that I just didn't even think about when I was a surface ship player. But on all of these drops, whenever I drop the strike on, let's say, this breast here, and we're going to do good damage on this one, my initial... <laughs> lineup was not very good obviously but notice how the planes carry on in a straight or relatively straight line and it carries me here into north carolina a into potentially worcester a which is very very scary uh, but that's something that i need to understand as a surface ship player that maybe i can position my ship in such a way that even though i'm aggressive and playing a little bit outside of the bubble of my team whenever the carrier does come try to strike me that resulting action of the planes once they drop their payload it'll take them right into that blob of AA and that's something that at least a good carrier I think won't be trying to do and that'll allow me to play a little bit more aggressive so something like that is what I'm trying to find but more situations like that I'm already more interested in playing a surface ship against carriers and trying to figure out these nuances from both sides so let me know what you think in the comments down below about this carrier game. Uh, it's not a great carrier game, but it's one of the better ones I've got in the few games that I've played so far. Definitely a lot of improvement that I can be making. Let me know what you think about situations where a surface ship could be playing that actually baits the enemy carrier into striking and losing a bunch of planes, or what I could just be doing better as a carrier player or a submarine player. If you got any ideas, leave them in the comments down below. I'm sure there's a lot of you that are much better at these two classes than I am at this point, and I do want to get better at them and understand the ins and outs of these things. And for the rest of you, let me know what you think of just having any carrier games at all on the channel. It's certainly not going to become the norm. It's not going to be something that you see all the time, but every once in a while, there might be a carrier game if I've got something interesting to provide as far as commentary or positions that surface ships should or should not be taking. Again, I appreciate you guys sitting through this one if you did manage to get this far through a carrier game. I tried to speed things up a bit, cutting out some of the flying downtime, but I know carrier gameplay still isn't the most interesting for a lot of you. And that's okay. I fully understand that, to be honest. It's not the most interesting to play all the time either for me. 
But that's going to do it for today's video. I don't really think I have much to provide as far as captain builds. It was just kind of throwing together a captain based on damage output. And that's really all I focused on in this one. We do manage to get one last strike in onto the Soyuz. And that's going to be the game. A pretty good result. Overall, I think I have a lot that I can improve on. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching again. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.